Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomai, and I got another rant for you today. Thank you all for your continued support of our channel. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Become a member of the Come On Now, the podcast family, and hit up all of our social media pages. Let's jump on in. This is the one time I'm going to do this. I'm probably lying. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm going to put it out there. But this is the one time I really want to do this. Because I want to get this off my chest. I don't want to have to do this specific thing again. All right. And the only way that I will do this again is if I'm given reason to do this again. What might that be? Angel Reese's new podcast, Unapologetically Angel. How about that? That, that, that word, for example, unapologetically. Does that sound like that? That means I'll never apologize for anything. That, that means I'll never apologize for being me and how I am and who I am and blah, 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 blah. Is that what that means? I think that's what that means. Because if I'm unapologetically something, that means I don't care who I offend, how I offend them, how I hurt them, how I impact them, or anything of that nature. And I'm not going to give a flying you-know-what about how they feel about it. If a man ever, if not, if a man came out with a podcast and said, I don't know, unapologetically Shaq or unapologetically Kevin Garnett or unapologetically whoever. If I was unapologetically me and I never apologized for anything in my life, Boy, if you think what you see on these rants is rough at times and and in your face, it's nothing close to the things that I don't think any I don't think anyone really will ever truly understand or know what a person is feeling unless you're in an inner circle. Right? So when you say you're unapologetically something, that means you don't give a shit how anyone feels about anything. And you will insult them, degrade them, embarrass them, diminish them, disrespect them, demean them, all that stuff, and not care. Because guess what? You're unapologetically you. Right? Okay. Let's jump in. Name of that podcast, Unapologetically Angel. And I did not watch it, but I saw a couple of clips that have been floating around where, of course... She discusses Caitlin Clark and their relationship and how whatever. Let's remember. But see, this is what I knew this podcast would be when it was announced. This is a podcast to basically look for what I would call a pity party. Now, I don't walk in Angel Reese's shoes, and I don't claim to, and I don't, I don't know everything that she goes through. I have no doubt that she probably receives messages that are disrespectful, disgusting, obscene, and and completely inappropriate. I also know what she does publicly, that she shows the world. But this is what she initially posted when she announced her podcast. Let's take a look. To the announcement of my podcast, Unapologetically Angel. I'm looking forward to this so much. Y'all gonna see y'all favorite celebrities, actress, artists, um, anybody that y'all wanna see. We're gonna be spilling the tea from our voice, our narrative, our perspective. But for the blogs, which y'all think y'all clocking tea, y'all not clocking no tea because we're gonna spill the tea on our, our real lives. Period. Make sure y'all follow on all my social media platforms, Unapologetically Show on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all that. Make sure y'all follow to stay up to date. Every Thursday we drop it, we, we drop it tea. We drop a seat every Thursday. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm super excited. Let me know what y'all want to see, the questions y'all got for my pre- All right, who cares? You're welcome for the you're welcome for the promotion. Don't they have a basketball game tomorrow? I don't know when this was recorded. I know it dropped at 5 p.m. today. I don't know when it was recorded. If it was recorded today, yesterday. Um Tuesday, Monday, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't care. I'm going to presume it was probably recorded in the last day or so. 
The reason I bring that up is she's a basketball player, right? I, I mean, I thought she was. They played on Tuesday. Today's Thursday. They played tomorrow. They played in Vegas on Tuesday, so I can't imagine she recorded Tuesday. So I'm going to guess she recorded either yesterday or this morning because it takes time to edit video. She's shooting 33.5% from the field since the All-Star break. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about certain things, when I say your, your, your mind really isn't about basketball. It's not. It's not. It's not about basketball. It's about you and how you can brand yourself and market yourself and all those things, which are great in the offseason. While other players were working on their game during the All-Star break, while other teams were working on their game during the All-Star break and the Olympic break, she was in Europe branding herself, going to events. Good for you. Her shooting percentage has dropped three points since the All-Star break. Because I think she was shooting about 40, 41% at the break. She's shooting 38% now. She is shooting right now worse in the last eight games or nine games than she shot in the first 10 games of the season when she was shooting 34.5%. The last eight games, she has shot 33.8%. So she has regressed back to what she was at the beginning of the season. So she put in no work during the break for her actual job. The job that allows her to have these opportunities that most people don't have in the world. She proclaims to be uh, an actress. What? Of what? An actress of what? A model of, of what? Models go through hell to do that job. Every woman that walks around saying, I'm a model, I laugh. It's laughable because models work their tails off. Professional ones, the ones in Europe. Yeah, I guess if you want to be in a rap video, cool, shake your ass. It's not a model. No disrespect. It's not a model. You're not a model. You're twerking for a camera. You have time to make a podcast. That podcast was an hour. I saw that I was, I saw that it was an hour. Having done this now for eight months, I'm going to guess that that podcast took a lot longer than one hour to make. I'm going to guess that they had to clip it apart, put it together, all that stuff to make it fit. Unless it was live. I don't know. If it, if it was live, then that's even worse because she has a game tomorrow. Why is she worried or focused on this shit when she has a game tomorrow? I thought in the podcast, she also says, I, I'm not worried about the rookie of the year. I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about uh, the playoffs. Playoffs? I'm going to go Jim Mora on you. Playoffs? She should just hope they win another game. They're one in eight since the break. Or one in seven, whatever it is, since the break. August 25th, let's see here specifically. Da, 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 da. August 15th, one, two, one, one, one and two, one and three, one and four, one and five, one and six, one and seven, one and, one and eight since the break. And you're sitting here talking about, okay, yeah, you don't care about the rookie of the year. Yeah, miss me with that lie. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. If you were so, if you were so concerned about winning, Wow, you really were absorbed with your, your statistics. That's for dang sure. For someone that claims to never know anything, that's for dang sure. But let's just jump into the actual things that thing that she said specifically that I want to showcase today on this podcast that was about Caitlin Clark and their relationship. People often mention Caitlin Clark. You've said in interviews, there's no beef, but the media keeps going on. So how do you feel about that situation? Kaylin is an amazing player, and I've always thought she was an amazing player. We've been playing each other since high school. So I think it's really just the fans, her fans, the Iowa fans, mm -hmm. now the Indiana fans that are like, they ride for her. And I, and I respect that respectfully, but sometimes it's very disrespectful mm -hmm. 
Um, I think there's a lot of racism when it comes to it. And I don't believe she stands on any of that. But when it comes to death threats, like I'm talking about people have come down to my address. No. Follow me home. Like it's come down to that. Multiple occasions, people have made AI pictures of me like naked. Literally. Really? They have sent it to my family members. My family members are like uncles are sending it to me. Like, no. are you naked on Instagram? It sucks to see that. And it's, it's really hard that I have to go through that. And now seeing other players even having to go through that. Um, but like. At the end of the day, it's a game that we do both love, but there is no hate. All right, Let, let's let's dive into that. Let's dive into that comment. I'm going to start with there's no hate. Remember this? And that's on getting a win in the packed arena, not just because of one player on our, on our charter flight. Hashtag Skytown. That was a tweet after a game earlier this year, and she deleted that tweet. Why do you think that is? Yeah, she denies what it was about. We all know what it was about. It's a comment about Caitlin Clark. It's hating on Caitlin Clark. No hate? I'm not saying you hate her. I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone, I don't think you hate her. I don't think you care for her. I don't think you like her. I think you would love to have her as a teammate. I don't think that she'd love to have you as one. If Well, I take that back. She would love to have you as a teammate if you understood your role, which was to grab rebounds and kick it back out. And you understood that you are not the face of the team and that you are not the main option. You are not even the fourth option. Because if she played for the Indiana Fever, she would not be the third option or the second option. She might be the fourth, which means get your ass in the dunker's position, grab rebounds, kick the shit back out, or grab a rebound, put the ball back in the hoop on a layup. If you miss it and you grab it again, kick it back out. Do not keep trying to freaking shoot the ball at the rim. I'm sorry, shot put the ball at the rim in hopes of it eventually going in. That would be the way that I think Caitlin Clark would love to play with her because no one is questioning that she can rebound a damn basketball. She absolutely can rebound a damn basketball. I don't think she looks good defensively as people want to claim that she is because I watch her play, and I think defensively she's absolutely mediocre. She's no Dennis Rodman, that's for damn sure. I know that, comp that comparison's been made. She can't defend like Dennis Rodman. She doesn't defend like Dennis Rodman. She barely runs the floor defensively. She gets caught up on picks by freaking Kelsey Plum on back doors. Like that's a five, eight guard pick the six foot three power hard. Yeah, sure. With no effort whatsoever to get through it. Let's look at this one now. It's probably been said about me, but honestly, I'm sorry, let's start it all on. started from the national championship game. And I've been dealing with this for two years now and understanding like, yeah, negative things have probably been said about me, but honestly, I'll take that because look where women's basketball is. People are talking about women's basketball, but you never would think that we'd be talking about women's basketball. People are pulling up to games. We got celebrities coming to games, sold out arenas, like just because of one single game. And just looking at that, like I'll take that role. I'll take the bad guy role and I'll continue to take that on and be that for, the, for my teammates. And if I want to be that, and I know I'll go down to history, I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watching women's basketball is not just because of one person, it's because of me too. And I want y'all to realize that. Get the, get the fuck out of here. See, there you go. Not just because of one person, because of me too. Why are you begging for attention? Why would you be begging for attention? The attention you have in large part is from your antics in the national championship game. Because up until that game, most people outside of college basketball had no idea who you were. At that point, why do I know this? Because I was watching. At that point, there was no negative animus towards Angel Reese. In fact, she was the underdog. She was the underdog to South, to Big Bad South Carolina. She was the underdog. And up until that point, there was nothing, there were no issues. She made issues. She created it because she felt like she needed to 
she needed i don't know what it, i don't know what she felt she needed to do and why she felt she needed to do it maybe because she didn't like the fact that caitlin clark did the you can't see me but she wasn't even doing at the person that she thought it was being done to which was Haley van lift who has confirmed that caitlin clark wasn't even doing it towards her she was doing it towards somebody like to to somebody else that she knew or whatever it was it wasn't toward a player so you don't even know what, what why she was doing it. She may have, she, there was words that she may have been doing it to herself. Like you can't see me, great. But she also didn't do it. Your face is here and mine is here, and she didn't do that. But we sure as hell saw what happened in that national championship game, and we sure as hell saw that you decided to be mocking and taunting her three feet from her. Where, where less than that, probably two feet from her, where realistically, you weren't the reason they won that game. Your teammates who were knocking down threes that day were the real reason because they hadn't hit threes all season. You walked into that game as an as the underdog, and you turned yourself into the villain that you claim you'll embrace. But what happened last year when you got beat in the Elite Eight to Iowa by Iowa? You were in boo-hoo tears, crying up a storm, moaning, bitching and moaning about being sexualized, about being people being mean to you, and you have not been happy. Of course, you ignore the fact that you got suspended from your own basketball team as the captain. You know how bad you have to be as a captain to be suspended for as many games as she got suspended for? You know how bad of an attitude you have to have to have the mother of another player talk shit about you on Twitter and then have your mom going back and forth with her where she's talking, they're talking about grade point averages. Come on now. You created this. If you had been a simple good sport in victory and not a pompous asshole in victory, you wouldn't have any negative vibes towards you. Nobody, but at the same time, nobody would care about you. The rivalry that was created would have never been created. So maybe you were watching some WWE and you decided, I'm going to turn heel because they'll never let that white girl be a heel. She'll always be the face. And so guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to be the fucking heel and I'm going to make everybody know. So you're either you're going to love me or you're going to hate me because that's how heels work in the WWE. If you didn't know, if you don't watch wrestling. Heels are, back in the day, heels were hated. But now, heels are either loved like crazy by a certain section of fans or hated by many. But what exists is that people want to see you. So she's not necessarily wrong that people want to see her. People do want to see her. Do people want to see her, though, more than Caitlin Clark or even in the same stratosphere as Caitlin Clark? No. Not at all. The numbers told you that in the NCAA tournament last year, well, this year in March, they told you that again, every single game that Caitlin Clark plays, that they move games to, to NBA arenas and that the most watched games are Indiana games. So, yeah, you might be part of a small a slim part of the reason you can look back in 20 years. But oh, come on now. Come on now. You're not the reason. That's like saying Ron Harper was the reason the Bulls won the championship in 1996, 97, 98. Come on now. You're not. And rather than ride the wave of what this young of what Caitlin Clark has done, you choose to st say stuff like, yeah, charter flights and deleting tweets, and then you say this stuff in interviews. Heck, you cheerleaded when Kennedy Carter body blocked Caitlin Clark on a dead ball. You cheer, you were seen on video cheering it on. You were. Your team has personally committed four flagrant fouls on Caitlin Clark. This season, out of 30 in the league. Caitlin Clark has been flagrant fouled five times. Probably could be more if they called it. But four times by the Chicago Sky. 
and Chicago Scott committed five flagrant fouls all year. So why aren't you flagrant fouling Aaliyah Boston? Why aren't you flagrant fouling Kelsey Mitchell? Why aren't you flagrant fouling Nalissa Smith? Was well, it because Nalissa Smith will get up, get up and punch you in the face? I, I mean, let me ask you: Is that why? Why don't you flagrant foul them? No, you flagrant foul Caitlin Clark because you're trying to get her out of her game. You're trying to get in her head because you know the only chance you have to really win is to get her out of her game. And I'm sure people saw the video where she said she wanted to punch Diamond to Shields in the face. Because that came out recently, I think it was today I saw it. There's video of her saying after Diamond and Shields body checked her in their last game last week at midcourt, I want to punch her in her fucking face. But you know why Caitlin Clark doesn't do that? Because Caitlin Clark knows her value to her team. It far exceeds the value of Diamond and Shields to her team. The same way if Indiana pulled one of the end of the bench reserves off and said, go out there and clothesline Angel Reese. Let's see if we can get her to respond. We don't care if you're not playing because you're not going to play anyhow. But if you clothesline her and she responds by punching you in the face, then you did your job. You got their best rebounder out of the game. They have no shot and shit of winning. Even though they had very little shot and shit of winning to begin with, now the best rebounder is off the floor. They can't get, they'll never get second chance points. These are the facts. Caitlin Clark's not soft. She's just not stupid. She should, if she wasn't worried about getting, getting kicked out of the game because she knows her value to her team, I have no doubt that Caitlin Clark would scrap because she's getting hit a whole lot and dealing with it. The same way Michael Jordan did in his early days. And he didn't go get into fights. How about when you freaking clothesline her across the head with your forearm and acted like you did nothing? You had no chance in blocking that shot. It's okay. We know why you didn't. You're a com- but, but your response is you're a competitor. We compete hard. So competing hard is having five flagrant fouls of the league's 30. Think about that. There's 12 teams. You guys are 17% or so of the flagrant fouls in the league. In the league. And you're sitting here acting like y'all don't play dirty basketball? You do. You play like the Pistons did in the the late 80s. Except the Pistons had skillful players to play on offense. Y'all really don't. Let's be real here. We can be on. Let's be honest. Honesty is a big thing for me. Now. She said another thing in that thing where she talked about being sexualized. She talked about people following her to her home. She talked about uh, um, Caitlin Clark fans being racist. Look, I don't condone racism. I don't condone slurring people with with racial slurs. That's disgusting. Look, that's not that's not called for. And yes, I do know that I'm sure that's happened. And I have no doubt that people have said some absolutely vile shit to her or not to her personally because they don't know her and can't get close enough to her, but via social media that she claims she never watched, looks at, which I, we all know is a lie. Um, because like that's another example of a lie. She claimed that she didn't know about her rebounding record. Of course she knew about her rebounding record. They claim that they don't know about when she's going for double-doubles. Of course they know. Why? Because she demands the ball. She demands the fucking ball. When she hasn't scored and needs some more points. She's done it over and over again. She's putting games down 25 points to grab a couple more rebounds and score five more points, and it happened on national television. Well, the other team has their third string in the game. That happened to be Indiana. Let's stop it. You you, you want to call Caitlin Clark what she did yesterday at stat pad? In, in reality, it's not. Now, the one thing I will say is that 10th assist – in my book, was not an assist, but it was a home court scoring book, and they gave her an assist. The rebound, though, is she supposed to move out of the way and not touch the rebound that's coming right to her? This wasn't a blowout. This was a seven-point game. Someone shot a three with 10 seconds left. What's she supposed to do? Let the ball roll out of bounds or hope that no one else from the, from the, the Sparks goes and gets it? That game is not over, although, yeah, I mean, it, it would be very difficult for the Sparks to have won at that point. But 
No one else was around the ball to catch it. It came right back to her. Someone said that's God's will. Eh, whatever. I don't expect her to not catch the ball. The assist, I don't think was an assist. I will stand on it. I was a scorekeeper for a long time. I don't think it was an assist. But the scorebook in Indiana gave her an assist. I'm curious to see how many rebounds have been given to Angel Reese in Chicago that might not be rebounds. I don't know. But again, the scorebook gave her an assist. Ergo, that's an assist. Therefore, she has a triple-double. And you know what? There was nothing padded about that. That was a freaking four-point game with four minutes, three minutes to go. It was 89, 87, 84 with like two and change. It wasn't a 25-point game where all the starters went to the bench and she's standing out there trying to pat, get more numbers. It wasn't remotely the same. But if you don't like it, that's your fucking problem. That's your problem. I know I'm going on a, on a bit of a tangent here, but you sit here and talk about how people are racist to you. That's unacceptable. No one should be. But I can tell you this. I have a message board full of disgusting comments from Angel Reese fans who are massively disrespectful towards Caitlin Clark on our boards, on Instagram and on YouTube. And I can go through them if you want to at some point. I can pull them up. I can screenshot them. I've called people out on videos over some of their disgusting comments. Real shit. Now, no, no one's sexualizing Caitlin Clark because most she's a plain Jane girl. She's not walking around with eyelashes and freaking makeup and her shorts tucked under her panties so that you can see her ass cheek more, you know, more uh more cupped the way Angel Reese dresses for a game. It's a basketball game, not a goddamn fashion show. It's a damn basketball game. She wears long-ass freaking shorts tucked in her neck. <laughs> like, she's there to ball. You're there to look, trying to look cute. She's there to ball. Priorities. Ball, look cute. What's the priority? The priority is the ball. That's the priority. Win games. For which she's done a lot of it lately. But I can promise you, I've seen some vile comments towards Caitlin Clark on our boards from the videos that we post from people that dis that dislike Caitlin Clark just because she's Caitlin Clark for no other reason. It is not Caitlin's Caitlin Clark's job to police fans the same way it's not Angel Reese's job to police her fans. Because if they have to do that, then that's all they'll be doing. Does Angel Reese condone the things that are said towards Caitlin Clark? She doesn't care. Why should Caitlin Clark care about what the fans that she may have say about Angel Reese? She shouldn't. She doesn't have to. That's not her concern. That's not her concern. Now, anyone who does that to her is a pig. It's a piece of shit. They shouldn't do that. And it's sad that that's what this whole thing has become. And I think it's become that for a variety of reasons, including people who are disingenuous in national media making outrageous comments and then disappearing for a month when it's time to face the music to say you were fucking wrong. But let's get with the real shit here, because at the end of the day, the next topic that came up was sexualization. And she mentions her Instagram pages. And then she goes into the AI. People have made AI pictures of me um, and send it to my family. Really? And your uncles have called you. The fact that your uncles would call you and ask you is this you? That makes them kind of twisted, if you ask me. 
your uncles might need something because I don't know what's going on there. Your uncles don't seem to know you well enough. Your uncles, that means your mother or your father's brothers. Your uncles, I'm going to take it literal because I don't know, you might call other people uncle. But your mother or father's brothers, and you're sitting here saying they have no idea that you that you would pose post nude pics on Twitter? They don't know you well enough to know that you probably wouldn't do that? Or is it because you posted yourself getting your vagina waxed and showed a mold of it on social media? Yeah, you posted that. You created the narrative of sexualization. Do I think people should be making AI photos of you? Absolutely not. But guess what? You are a person who's chosen to try to be a cute and hot celebrity. And you go right and you Google AI news of celebrities, and there's a laundry list of them. There's a laundry list, tons of AI celebrity photos that have been created by creeps. And they're all fake. There's tons of celebrities that have that happen to them. It's not cool. I don't I don't condone that shit. But you have been posting so much crap of yourself online that anyone on the planet would call sexualization. The outfits you wear to games are outfits that you would wear to a club, not to a basketball game that you're going to play in. The only outfit that I have seen worse than anything Angel Reese has worn to a game in terms of showing off as much as she can show off was an outfit that the Phoenix Mercury guard Sophie Cunningham recently posted, which was absolutely astonishing. What the hell was that girl thinking about? If you haven't seen it, Google Sophie Cunningham, Phoenix Mercury outfit to game. It, she made a whole TikTok about it. I mean, she might as well have gone to the game naked. What are we doing? I know that the men wear some funky ass shit. But I guess maybe if they show up in fucking Speedos, I guess that's comparable. And no shirt and no shorts and no pants. Wearing less and less clothing doesn't make you look classy. Posting your ass on social media doesn't make you classy. Now, the final thing that she mentioned. And you know why you never have a problem with Caitlin Clark on that? Because she doesn't wear shit like that. You know why no one does? No, no one. She doesn't wear that shit to a game. She's there to hoop, man. The last thing she said that, that stood out was she mentioned people following her to her house. Look. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm going to take her for her word. If that's happened, I hope she's called the police. But how do you know people were following you to your house? How do you know that? Did they stop you? Did they get out of your, their car? And how do you know they weren't paparazzi? Because guess what? Once you're a celebrity, paparazzi follow you around. TMZ people follow you around. They know where you are all the time. All the time. Brie Bella, not Brie, I'm sorry. Nikki Bella, who was a WWE wrestler, recently got domestically violated by her by her husband. A DV charge against her husband. He was arrested. She was seen at the airport. Who the Private airport, no less. Clearly followed to the airport and a photograph taken of her, of her finger with no ring on it. That's on TMZ. TMZ, it follows y'all everywhere. So again, I don't know if it was TMZ or if some creep. I don't know. But if it was some creep and you know this, did you call the police? Did you have them arrested? And if it's coming to that, why don't you have security? Because you're making enough money to hire a security person or to have some level of an entourage around you. I know you're not being paid like NBA players, but all your endorsement deals, 
you've got to be clearing five million dollars this year. When you have that kind of money, you have that type of celebrity status, and you're a woman, no less, you probably should have security of some kind. So I hope that what she said is not true. If it is true, it's disgusting. But you created a channel for you to, on YouTube, a podcast to vent. When initially you said, we're spilling all the tea. Celebrities, all that stuff. Actresses, artists, celebrities. Who was a celebrity on today? Your first show. Wouldn't your first show be the bomb show that you bring out? Boom. Wasn't the idea of the show I thought in my brain, based on what you said, that you're the way it came across was that you're interviewing them. No, you're being interviewed. So is this what we're gonna have every every Thursday? An Angel Reese interview where she gets to voice her newest gripes about Caitlin Clark fans and everything in her life? Because <sighs> We know where her mind is, and it's not basketball. Caitlin, Caitlin Clark didn't start a podcast. Caitlin Clark has had every reason to start a podcast based on the crap that's been thrown her way. If she wanted to vent about how she's received racist behavior from colleagues, your teammate, Kennedy Carter, Ka Copper from Phoenix, Asia Wilson has given her some. There's play, not to mention yourself. Player after player have taken veiled pot shots at Caitlin Clark since she got into the WNBA. And the only white one was Diana Taurasi. And Diana Taurasi quickly changed her tune when Caitlin Clark busted her ass. On the court. So, heck, Caitlin Clark was attacked and, and 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 ridiculed by the most esteemed and respected college basketball coach in the history of women's college basketball. How is that take going for you, Gino? You look like a freaking clown. She has been attacked from directions that Angel Reese can't understand. Because the pressure to perform for Caitlin Clark is eons higher than Angel Reese because no one had expectations of Angel Reese. She was the seventh pick, not the first. She wasn't even the first pick for her team. But if you really want to go in that direction, Caitlin Clark could drop a podcast and reveal some pretty vile shit, I'm sure, about things that have been said to her that have been sent to her family, that have been posted on social media, things said by ESPN pundits that were massively disrespectful. Monica McNutt flat said she can't stand Caitlin Clark. She didn't have to say it word for word. But let's pull it up. Let's, let's remind you about that one. I'm going to pull that one up now. Why the fuck not? Let's go there. Let's go there. I want to go right there. Let's check it out because that one is good. Here we go. Boom. Upload. In the WNBA community who feel like I don't want this to belong to everybody. I want it to belong to this band of, of uh, sisters that have worked so hard to make it something. Oh, my <laughs> Let's rewind that. Let's rewind the question from John Stewart. Let's rewind this. This is Monica McNutt from ESPN. There are people within the WNBA community. People within the WNBA community who feel like I don't want this to belong to everybody. I want it to belong to this band of, of uh, sisters that have worked so hard to make it something. Oh, Monica McNutt! I Boom. I don't need to play the rest of this bullshit. I was talking about Caitlin Clark. I watched the whole thing. I was about Caitlin Clark. You think that's not a racial thing? You think? I think it is. Seems that way. Why does she feel that? I, 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 why does she feel that way once this young woman comes in who's taking all the hype, taking all the praise, mm -hmm. taking all the glory, getting love from every direction that she wishes 
other players may have had. I don't know. <clears throat> like I said, I hope this is my only commentary on the Angel Reese podcast because I don't. I'm not gonna watch it. I didn't watch it. I promise you, I didn't watch it. I got that clip off of a website. It's joke. It's a joke to me. The whole thing is a joke to me. The whole thing is a joke. I, I want to put one more thing. Um, uh, that's not it. I, I, I got to see if I can find this. Not to mention, I mean, hey, you, you, I mean, look at the outfit she's rocking in this damn podcast. Okay. I don't know. Definitely not a business, definitely not a business type suit or a business attire. Oh, she also mentioned she got death threats. I mean, death threats, that's, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. Again, I, I I don't know if she had you know these things. I, I don't know if she's searching for like. I thought this podcast was supposed to. I thought I can't find it. I thought this podcast was supposed to be out about talking to celebrities. Apparently, it's not talking about herself and voicing her gripes and voicing her issues and voicing the things that bother her. If that's what she wants to do, go ahead. But we all know what your focus focus is. It's not basketball. You had a game tomorrow. You better come out and drop 25 with 20 boards and shoot 65% from the field. You better. But we know that probably won't happen 33.8% since the All-Star break. Anyhow, that's all I got for this one. You let me know what your thoughts are. Leave a, leave a thought. Leave a comment. Share this video, like this video, support our channel, continue supporting our channel. We greatly appreciate you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Come on now.